Rock isn't dead. It's in flux. Hi, everyone. I'm Britt with Rock and Flux, and I am joined today by Andrew Gaultier, who is a member of the band Hematite, and we're going to be talking about his career and about the band. Um, so, Andrew, thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm stoked to be here. So you and Davey Muse created a band called Hematite, and it's pretty interesting because you're kind of combining country and metal, which I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do. Um, so can you kind of tell me some background information about how you all kind of came together to create this band? Totally. Um, so I kind of got my start playing in the metal world. I toured with a couple of metal bands, which kind of like, you know, led me into Davey's path. We kind of just talked back and forth because he knew, he knew that I do metal and country. Um, I I'm in Nashville doing country stuff primarily now. We kind of just joked back and forth about wanting to start a band together someday. I ended up in Portland sometime in 2021, and we were able to meet up and hang out for the first time in a while. We're kind of just talking about how we like to make this, like, I guess, gothic take on a country band. And I happened to have a few tracks laying around from the previous years that I kind of just messed around with. And I was like, well, hey, check these out. If you're into it, let's see what we can do. He ended up thinking it was perfect for his vision. uh, And then we kind of just, you know, built upon that. Okay. And I mean, what made you want to combine those two? Do you just both like metal and country music? So you figured to try to mix it? Yeah. So like whenever I was a little kid, my dad kind of gave me like the Metallica Black Album cassette and the Merle Haggard cassette. So like metal and country have pretty much been like my uh, my two loves for most of my music career. So uh, after a while, I was like, you know what? I haven't really heard someone do something like this. So why not give it a go? Right. That makes sense. So you guys have had two singles that you've done so far um, with this band. So the first one was Big Bad Wolf, and you released Mm -hmm. it last year. It kind of reminds me, especially in the very beginning of it, of Wanted Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi. I'll here for that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I don't know why. It made me think of that song. Can you kind of tell me? And I feel like, and I don't know if this is done on on purpose, but the vocals are almost kind of growled on that song and it's it's called big bad wolf so i didn't know if that was kind of purposeful can you just tell me about writing and recording that yeah so um that was actually kind of funny it's kind of just you know davy's voice just kind of naturally does that in that low register but whenever i made the track i um just had the wolf as like the you know working title for the music track and he kind of just took that and ran with it and yeah it kind of just worked out that way to where his voice definitely fits the vibe of the uh you know, the story of the song. Yeah. I mean, and it's it's interesting. So your your newest single is Adios. You released that earlier this month on the 10th, correct? Correct. Um, and that you did a music video for that mixes, like very, very clearly mixes the goth kind of metal scene with the country. Can you tell me about one, you know, recording that song and then two, the music video? Because it's, I've never seen anybody do it anything like this before so i just think it's really interesting totally yeah so um the music video part of it's a little bit more on davies and he has like quite the unique vision of things that match pretty well with the song but he has like his whole crew up in portland that um you know already kind of like was in that you know metal mixed with country kind of vibe as far as their aesthetic goes so it worked out pretty well with the song song wise that's probably my favorite track on the ep it's very um i like to you know paint a picture with the tracks that i make which is a fun part of Hematite for me is like it's kind of like paint a picture before the words even get there. Audios kind of has like that, you know, very desolate desert kind of vibe to it. Mm-hmm. And he like definitely nailed like that desolate kind of vibe in the video. Well, I was going to say something about that too, because it kind of does seem like that song is telling a story. And I feel that country does that often. A lot of, you know, country songs and music, they're almost like a storytelling type Absolutely. of situation, which I don't think many other musical genres necessarily do that but it's very apparent in this song that you're like that is something of that element that you're taking and adding to this because i don't really know that many metal songs that necessarily tell a story not that they don't exist but it's not necessarily the, the core element of that yeah that's definitely um you know something we try to pull from the countryside of what we do is having that full not only like a you know a written out story but also like a visual and audio kind of stories that way it puts you in a place you know 
really just want the vibe of the song and the story to really put you somewhere, yeah. you know, in particular. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I followed you both on Instagram just to kind of get a picture of you as individuals um, outside of this band, too. And I, I did notice that Davey does photography, which I feel kind of matches the look of that video, which I know you mentioned before. He has, a, you know, a crew in Portland that kind of does that. Was any of that combined, his photography work with with filming that? Absolutely. Yeah. So like I said, Davey's got a very unique perception on how he does his um, audio, visual kind of stuff. And the, the fun thing about Hematite is that neither one of us really like reached outside of what we just naturally do to make it happen. It just so happens that the two of us and our unique perspectives on things really just match together really well to create what the band's doing, which has been pretty fun. Yeah. How long have you two known each other? Like you've been friends for a while, correct? Probably since I want to say 2018, 2019. Yeah, so a few years. Okay. So you live in Nashville. He lives in Portland. Do you feel, and you're originally from Baton Rouge. Correct. Yeah. So I think I ask most people who come on the show, because I feel like, you know, your surroundings affect your mood. And then that, to me, affects, you know, the kind of music you write or, you know, because your feelings and what you're thinking and the atmosphere that you're in obviously affects all of that. So can you kind of tell me like throughout your career and, and the different areas that you lived in, how that maybe affects your approach to music or what kind of music you're listening to or like? I know, I mean, has to living in Nashville definitely, you know, have an impact, but I would even be curious, you know, Portland and Nashville are such different places. If that maybe makes you all kind of approach things differently too. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I really think that, you know, the Portland side of things, that's kind of been more the visuals, you know, especially as far as like album cover and stuff like that goes or any type of art that we use. It's all very, you know, mountainous. It's all very kind of bleak, dark kind of stuff, which I think, you know, just the geography of the Portland layout really matches that. And then for me, like coming from Louisiana, everything's very swampy, which I kind of like to put into the music side of things. It's all a little bit just kind of kind of groggy, kind of dark. So yeah, I think the music side of things definitely kind of reflect, you know, my upbringing and stuff like that. And then being in Nashville kind of just taught me how to correctly put together songs, how to like, you know, make the dynamics roll correctly. So I was able to add a Nashville flair into that swampy sound. And he was able to, you know, take that Pacific Northwest scenery and kind of uh, put it in there with it to, you know, create a pretty unique little product. And so, I mean, you're in you're in several bands still because I saw you're also in a band called Big Fifty, and then you're in a metal band called um, To Speak of Wolves. So yeah, you've got a lot going on, and you're you're working as just a, like a, a live musician and recording musician in Nashville too. So you've obviously you said you toured because you were in the band He Is Legend, which was metal. Yeah, I'm assuming you've also toured in the country world. Um, with some other artists. How do you feel the touring experiences with those different types of bands? Can you tell me anything about like the differences there? Oh, totally. So like um, nowadays I have my own band, Big 50 here. I I just started playing in a band called Maddie and Tay here in town. The country world touring is (laughs) pretty vastly different. Like coming from the metal world uh, between Speak of Wolves, He is Legend. I was a stage manager for Memphis Mayfire for a little while. Those kind of tours, you know, you're gone for six, seven, eight weeks at a time. You don't really get to come home. It's a really fun time, but, you know, it's definitely a little bit more taxing on the body, especially doing, like, you know, He is Legend and Memphis Mayfire at the same time. I would come home from a full U.S. tour for a week and then leave to go on the other band's U.S. tour. End up being gone for almost four months with only a couple of days at home. The beauty of the country world, like this uh, tour I have coming up with Maddie and Tay, it's like, Bus call is at midnight on Wednesday. You go play your three shows and then you're home Sunday evening. You're home for three or four days and you go back out and do it again. So it's definitely much more, you know, Thursday through Saturday, kind of like, you know, or like have like a one-off fly out date in California or something like that versus, you know, hopping in a bus and just being gone for a full four weeks in the metal world. And how, I mean, how are the crowds different? I mean, I would imagine that's completely different um, oh, yeah. situation too. So kind of just depending on, you know, the band, you know, like uh, touring with He Is Legend, there's a much more, you know, older rock kind of crowd versus, you know, touring with Memphis Mayfire where there's a much younger crowd. Uh, I find with country, there's way less niche in the audience as far as the particular band goes. Kind of just country shows in general are kind of just all ages, 
young to old to, you know, people that are just there to listen to music. I think metal is a little bit more intentional as far as the crowd goes. The crowd's definitely, you know, typically there to see a particular band. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit more loose in the country world, I feel like. Do you feel, I mean, especially being on tour for as long as you are, I mean, that is a physical and also a mental situation that you really probably kind of get drained from, especially for a longer period of time. So how, I mean, when you're on the road for a longer time like that, how do you kind of keep yourself just physically and mentally healthy, I guess? So metal touring definitely makes it a little bit harder. But it's one of those things where, you know, say you're gone for four or five weeks, by the fourth or fifth day, you're kind of in tour mode. um, And, you know, you're kind of just, you're in it. And then when you get home, it's pretty weird for about a week until you kind of like recalibrate to being home. What I always got lucky with in the metal bands that I toured with is that I had a lot of close friends in those bands or in those crews. So, you know, if you're three or four weeks in, you're pretty mentally drained. Like you have a support group there with you to kind of like talk about it, get through it. It definitely, you know, has a bigger toll on your physical well-being than your mental well-being sometimes, Um, especially in like the more, you know, thrashy metal bands. I've literally come home from a a long tour once, went to a chiropractor and he asked if I had been in a car wreck because of the whiplash that I had from headbanging on stage. So (laughs) the physical aspect definitely takes a bit of a toll. Uh, The country world is definitely different in the way that, you know, like I said, you're only gone for three or four days, but mentally that's a little bit weirder because, you know, it usually takes those three or four days to get into the mode of being home. So if you've got five weeks worth of weekend runs, you're constantly going back and forth between being on the road, being home, being on the road. That's a little bit of a different thing to get used to there as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's like, as soon as you get comfortable... You're right back home. Yeah. 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 And buses aren't, I mean, they're not terrible, but they're not the most comfortable. I don't know how you all sleep in those bunks because... It's like claustrophobic to me. <laughs> but I guess- oh, I, I, I kind of love it. It's uh, it's really nice to bring my my little like you know mattress roll out that I put in there. It's very comfy. Yeah. See, every musician it. tells me that that they think that they're great. And I'm just like, I guess it's a certain <laughs> breed of person that needs to do it because I'm like, I don't think I could. But oh, um, yeah. it's that's funny. So I mean, like, and getting back to you know the fans and and the types of people that you know go to each of your shows, like whether it's country or it's a metal show. I mean, do you have any, like, stories of either one, like, you know, something that stuck out to you about, like, just the experience in general or, like, how people reacted to you or the, or the music or, you know, whatever whatever else? Totally, yeah. Um, so, and to speak of Wolves, um, for, like, you know, He is Legend and stuff like that, those are all just, like, they're my favorite bands I ended up just getting to tour with. Uh, but I, you know, I, did, I wasn't part of the writing process with the speak of Wolves. I was, though. And I think the things that really, you know stuck out there and the things that made it worth it you know you could be mentally and physically exhausted four weeks into a tour but then someone comes up to you and maybe it was a slow night where only three people were there and you know like especially getting started as a band those shows can be pretty rough on you like when you're already exhausted and you get to a show there's hardly anybody there but at the end of the show one of those three people walks up to you that's got your lyrics tattooed on their body talking about you know what your music did for them there's one night in particular, I remember that happened in, um, I want to say, Atlanta back in like 2015. And like, it just really gave me a whole new perspective. Like, I was being really jaded going into the show. Like I said, we, we were so exhausted. Things were kind of going pretty bad. I think we just had like our transmission just blew in our van, which was pretty much eating up any money we were going to make on that tour. Mm-hmm. We get to this show. It's, you know, a bleak situation. But at the end of the show, someone tells us they just drove like five hours to come see us, told us this story about, you know, the hardships they were going through and how our record just really brought a positive light to them. That particular night definitely gave me a uh, a new perspective on how I see things, not only in music, but just in the world. Yeah. But stuff like that, you know, that, that makes it really, really special interactions like that, knowing that you are just by doing what we love to do and like, you know, going out and playing music with my friends has made a positive impact on somebody out there. Yeah, I mean, that's inspirational. And I mean, especially, it's funny because I think we all have a tendency, you want to be good right away, or you want to see the work that you're putting into something give you some kind of return on it, right? And I think, like, as people, as human beings, we tend to get frustrated. And a lot of time it's like with ourselves because it's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm in this new band and everybody has to start somewhere. But like, you know, of course you want to play to people, 
it's even the same thing with this podcast. Like for me, it's like, you got to build your audience out. It's not going to happen overnight. And it's easy to kind of get into a, a thought process of like, well, is anyone even listening to this? Like, does it matter to anybody? Um, yeah. So of course, like when you get that kind of feedback, that's why you do it. Absolutely. It definitely gives you a new perspective. And I think every now and then we all need a little perceptive uh, shift for stuff like that. Because it's easy to forget how blessed we are to be able to, you know, have your own podcast or to have the band that you're doing or have anything that you're doing in life that's, you know, you're putting art out there. It's easy to forget that, you know, why you started doing it, but also it's easy to forget that it matters to people. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's easy to get in your own bubble with it in some respect. Oh, for sure. When you're closer to it, you know. So have you played any live shows as Hematite yet? So not yet. Um, There's actually a show coming up in Portland here for like the actual EP release. I want to say it's April 13th or 14th. I unfortunately won't be able to be there, so Dave will be doing it without me. But yeah, that'll be the first Hematite show. And when does the EP officially come out? I believe that is the 10th of April. Um, okay. I've got so much going on these days, I've totally blanked on the date. But yeah, I want to say it's the second weekend of April. And so, and that show will be in Portland. So you all haven't played yet, but I'm I'm just curious what you, if you have any expectations of what the audience will be like, because I mean, you're kind of taking, it's going to be very interesting to me to see the crowd at a band like Hematide shows, because you are combining, I feel like country and metal are starkly different as far as like the vibe and things like that. So you're combining both. Any okay. expectations of, you know, what that show might be like? Um, that's actually a great question. I, um, that's been Davey and I's like biggest thing that we've been kind of thinking about is like what kind of audience this will draw. I think naturally just coming from like, you know, his background with Vanna or my background with the metal bands that I've been in, I think naturally we're going to originally like from the jump attract a metal crowd. The hope is though, once we get some music out there to try to like broaden that up a bit, but I think that's going to be the fun part in the future is it's music that can appeal to the metal heads. It's music that can appeal to the country people. So. It'll be a pretty fun experience to see what it ends up drawing in. The interesting thing for me, I do agree with you. I think you you probably are going to get more metal people first. But see, I, I've and I've talked to some other artists that I've had on this podcast about this. But I feel like the metal world, it has so many niches in it. But I also feel like a lot of people that like metal will like a band like Nine Inch Nails, which is industrial, and that it gets into the goth and some of the other areas of music. So I feel like they tend to already kind of be, I don't want to use the word more open, but in some ways, like more open to what they listen to, or they already listen to like a, a variety of different things. And I totally. think depending on what type of country, because even within country music, there's obviously like, you know, different types of artists and, and even like little niches within that. But some country music fans, that's all they listen to. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's something, someone coming from that side, I would be very curious to see how they would take listening to Hematite because they may take a little longer to like it, but I could see them opening up to it too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of like, you know, one of like my goals whenever I started, you know, producing the music for this band was to make something that is approachable from all sides being someone that loves metal so much and loves country so much, I, I I understand that there's so much that both sides have to offer. So the idea of being able to create something that can like pull people in from either side is, um you know, kind of my contribution toward, I guess, trying to help up people understand or almost trying to create a bridge. You know what I mean? Like people that listen to metal that wouldn't listen to country, like maybe this could be the bridge that can help them acquire a taste for it. And then, you know, vice versa. Right. I mean, that definitely, because I'm one of those people, like I'm more, I definitely would listen to metal before I would listen to country. Not that I've never heard a country song I don't like. Like I've obviously heard some that I definitely like the song. Um, Mm -hmm. It's just what I tend to lean toward. But, you know, I do think that's like the beautiful thing about music is you can take so many different elements of it and genres and mix it together and and it works. And I do, in the end, think that it brings people together in a lot of ways, because even if you go to a band, one of the most recent ones, I was, was at a health show late last year. And I mean, there were so many different types of people in that audience. So I find that really interesting because you can, you know, take a band and then you get all these different people from all different walks of life, race, religion, whatever, in a room where maybe they would never be, you know, around each other in any other capacity. So 
Um, yeah, and to me, that's what kind of music's supposed to be. It's supposed yeah. to be a um, kind of like a city hall for people to bring people together and try something new. And a band like Health is so sick because they do that so well. They are so aggressive sounding in some things, but so like, you know, light and poppy and others in other ways. Like they're a perfect example of like, I guess what we're trying to do is create that yeah. middle ground for people. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think it's going to be really interesting for you all um, kind of as you move through this and start, you know, releasing your full EP and then actually like, playing out. Are there any other shows that you want to, I mean, obviously I'm assuming you want to actually tour with this band to a certain degree. So do you have any plans for that or like, what are your thoughts? So uh, at the moment, we're definitely, we definitely want to, uh, we are kind of, you know, working uh, on the whole, you know, being across the country from each other. It's one of those like slowly but surely processes. We're definitely, you know, trying to get on some shows out in Portland, trying to get on some shows out in Nashville and then kind of start building upon that, you know, wherever it may take us. So let me ask you that, too. So, I mean, because you basically live on different sides of the country from each other. How does that affect your writing and recording process? I'm assuming that you do most of it separately. Yes, we've actually done all of it separately, which has actually kind of like created a really fun process. Like um, I said, like I kind of start off with the music track. I'll compose the entire track musically. I'll send it to him having no idea what he's going to send back. And he'll send back something with his vocals on it. I'm like, okay, this is great. And I'll, you know, I'll put my vocals on it and I'll send it back to him. And then we have, you know, like a couple of people like my buddy Matt McClellan in Atlanta, who's uh, done some production stuff like the Speak of Wolves, Dead Wars Prada, Loath, bands like that. Mm-hmm. Like on audios, we had him like, you know, add like the creepy little horror sounds and stuff like that. Okay. So it's it's kind of almost like a, a blind writing process. It's been really cool that um, we get to kind of just rip off what each other's sins rather than being in the same room and doing it that way. I mean, because like, how do you think it would be different if you were in the same room? You don't, do you not think ideas wouldn't come out the same way as they do when you're separated? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's really easy um, in a writing process or in a writing room, like especially like being here in Nashville, where like getting in writing rooms is such a huge part of what you do. It's very easy to sit there and bog yourself down because like in the moment, you can't really get your full vision out while you're talking to someone about the song. And there's a whole lot of like trying to meet in the middle, like, the way we did it this time was like very unapologetically me and very unapologetically Davey, where mm-hmm. it's like we get to just do exactly what we're hearing rather than there being any weird, you know, mental block while we're sitting here trying to flesh it out together. Uh, we get to kind of just see the end product of what each other are hearing, uh, which I think led to create the sound. Yeah, I mean, it, it turned out pretty cool. So the process clearly works. So, um, so I mean... Are you pretty much set on Nashville is where you kind of want to be? Or do you see yourself venturing out to any other cities eventually? Uh, so Nashville, just by um, just by chance, happened to be like my whenever I was just touring really heavily prior to COVID. I moved here in like 2018. I was playing in a band from here. And I just so happened to love Nashville already. It's funny. I always say Nashville is like my second choice of where I want to be next to Portland. Having a career in country music, though, is just kind of the place you have to be. But I think if I was ever to move on from just wanting a country career, uh, then I'd probably actually end up in Portland, funny enough. So that makes, I mean, kind of makes it easier if you if you ever do. Uh, what about Portland, if you don't mind me asking? I've never been there, so. Portland's uh, rad. I, I, To me, I'm a huge sucker for the mountains. I'm a huge sucker for any type of like, you know, dense forest areas or like rainy kind of areas. To me, like Oregon in general, the Pacific Northwest is just, you know, my my end game as far as where I want to be at. You can go out there, travel one or two hours anyway and see like some of the most beautiful sights that America has to offer. And then on top of that, it's just a very, you know, it's a very open environment as far as people goes. There's very little judgment. You kind of you can really just go out there and be yourself without any uh, worries about finding a, a place to fit in. Well, that's always a good thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, Highly you, recommend it. You've toured all over the country. so. I would think you have a pretty good idea of of um, all the different areas and what they're about. Totally, yeah. And that one definitely, just like Nashville, stuck out to me. Have you ever toured in Europe at all? Uh, not yet. I think that's actually on the books for later this year, though. So I'm pretty okay. stoked about that. I, I was supposed to go to Europe twice at this point. One time, the tour kind of just fell apart. The other time, COVID got it. So here's the hope and this one works out. <laughs> well, and you know, I, COVID always comes up and it's, it's still a very real thing. So, I, I mean, we talk about it pretty much on every episode that we have. I think it's important to still talk about as far as the music industry goes, because that was an industry that was very, very affected by that whole thing. I mean, a lot of the venues and things like that, like, I don't think people realize 
the extent to which that really affected people's lives, not just musicians, but like all over the, the gamut of that industry. You know, what was your experience during that? Like, did you just focus on basically songwriting? Were you still playing at all? Like, how did that how did that all kind of work out? Um, so I actually just I just like two weeks ago had an article that I wrote in the Huffington Post about this, um, you know, just being in the music pre and post COVID. For me uh, personally, I was very burnt out whenever COVID happened yeah. from just being on the road so much that like I honestly took it as a total reset period. I kind of, you know, focused on finding something else to do with my brain rather than constantly focusing on music. Because I just needed that break and I needed to remember why I love playing music. So I honestly, for the first month, didn't even look at a guitar, didn't write, didn't even think about it. Gave myself that little fresh restart. And about a month into it, I picked up a guitar one day and started writing in my studio. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I do actually love this. I just needed a break. So like for me, it was great. And then after that, I just started writing. And that's honestly when the tracks came up, you know, for that would eventually become him a type. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's good, at least. And sometimes you just need a reset. When you do something for so long all the time, it's like, okay. Absolutely. Just, yeah. You, it's definitely needed sometimes. You need to like, so like I said, get back to the root of why you started doing it. Right. Right. And I feel like a lot of, I've heard so many people say the same thing that like it really made them kind of reset things. And also because they couldn't tour or like you couldn't do that many other things, it forced them to kind of write more than maybe they would have. So. Oh, totally. Yeah. Once I got back to it, I was writing more than I had in a long time. So it definitely, um, I, I took a negative and tried to make it as much of a positive as I right. could. And I'm glad you brought up the Huffington Post because I did notice when I was like looking at everything with you all that you're a contributor to that. Like, how did that come about? And, and kind of how do you feel about, like you write and contribute to articles about music, right? Uh, so I, that was like a one-off. I, that was ne okay. not something I put on my uh, my own bingo card. So it was a pretty interesting ordeal. It kind of just um, happened. I have a buddy that's a um, a wartime photographer for like photojournalist. Like he like spent you know the last six months in Ukraine, and um, he's really tied into the Huffington Post as a freelancer. Um, and we were just hanging out one night talking about this exact conversation, and I guess it struck a chord with him. He talked to his editor, and kind of like landed that way. Well, how do you feel about having um, written some? I mean, that's I think that's pretty neat. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I, I never really, uh, I guess, thought too much about it. It's, you know, it's, it's a subject that I was able to talk about really easily being that I lived it. And then uh, once it happened, once it was published, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Very nice. Well, now you can have, you can add that to the, the resume. It was already <laughs> totally. pretty large. So it's <laughs> never a bad thing. So I'm getting into um, some of the final questions for that I have for you today. I appreciate you taking the time. So something that I do ask everybody that I have on here, it's kind of like our, our branding, I guess, in some ways. So the question that I always ask is, is rock dead? And to me, it's not. I, I think it's in flux, um, which is where the name comes from. And, oh, nice. and um, <laughs> yeah, so I always like getting other people's opinions and takes on that. I honestly, and I, I can apply the same thing to, you know, what I consider, you know, traditional country or traditional anything. I think mm -hmm. things have gotten really whitewashed across the board, you know, not just in music, like just any type of art or any type of anything. And I think rock music is no exception. People are ready to see a revival in all these things. Yep. Um, and I really feel like rock music is making its comeback with like some of the great bands that are coming out these days. Yeah. Like I said, I think people are just getting tired of the whitewash and like ready to see some some old school rock or you know ready to get back out and see shows again like uh, i think uh i think people are ready for it i think it's coming back yeah i do too i mean with a band like for example turnstile they've really gotten some good press and like have gotten pretty noticed they're just a rock band which is great i like seeing all that stuff but i also like all like the the new updated new wave sounds that are that are starting to pick up and and get out there too so it's a difficult time to be a musician, but I also think with all of the access that people have to music now, I wish they would get paid better for that. But I do think overall it's a positive and not a negative. Yeah, I, I think um, I'm seeing a lot of movements in different directions uh, that are kind of happening that are all things that needed to happen in order to really revive everything. So I think everything's heading in the right track. I think it might be a slow burn. But I think um, a lot of things are heading in the right direction to bring things back. Yep, I agree. So as a closing, is there anything else that you would like listeners to know about Hematite or you or Davey? 
check out the music. We we hope it speaks for itself. Uh, we really just want to put, like I said, a bridge out there for metalheads and country heads alike. We want to create a visual story, a visual audio adventure. And, you know, we hope you dig it. And um, I hope you put out some more music here soon. And on Instagram, your handle is hematite.inc, right? Correct, at hematite.inc. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Um, it was a really, really nice conversation. And um, I look forward to hearing more from Hematite and see what you guys have coming up. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us.